So in this question we're given quite a lot of information so we're going to work through it slowly and then we'll begin with the question. So we're told that a uniform ladder of length 2A and weight W has its end A on a rough horizontal ground. So we can see here uh, that this is the ladder which I'm highlighting now in red and we're told that the coefficient of friction between the ladder and the ground is 1 over 4 and we're told that the end B of the ladder is resting against a smooth vertical wall and we can see this here. So this is our smooth vertical wall being highlighted now and that is where our ladder is lying against it. We're told that a builder of weight 7W stands at the top of the ladder. So he is here and to stop the ladder from slipping, the builder's assistant applies a horizontal force of magnitude P to the ladder at A. The force acts in the direction which is perpendicular to the wall. So we know that this is acting like that given the wall is that way. We're told that the ladder rests in equilibrium in a vertical plane perpendicular to the wall and makes an angle alpha with the ground where tan of alpha is equal to 5 over 2. We're told that the builder is modelled as a particle and that the ladder is modelled at a uniform rod. So in part A of this question we're asked to show that the reaction of the wall on the ladder at B has magnitude of 3w. So here we're dealing with moments. So we know that at point A we have a pivot point. So we have a pivot point here and then there are multiple forces acting this way and all sorts of ways but they are all in equilibrium given that there is no movement. So writing this down, at point A we have a pivot point and there are multiple forces on A. And they are all in equilibrium since there is no movement. So what we're going to do is we're going to annotate our diagram. So we know from the fact we have that this side is to do with the tan alpha, we have that our ground that is going to effectively have length of 2a cos alpha and then our wall is going to have 2a sin alpha, that's going to be its length and we know that the builder is here so I'll just draw a particle in there for our builder and we know that his weight is 7w down so this is going to be along this line here, so we'll draw our arrow in, so that's going to be 7w. And then we have the weight is also going to be from the middle of this rod, and that's because of the way it's spread out. So in practice, the weight from the ladder is coming from the middle, so that is 1w. Then we know we're going to have this force here, which is the force from the builder. So we'll call that F1 and just annotate it. Force from builder, and then will have an equal and opposite force in the other direction. And let's call this F2. So we're then going to take the moments about A. And we know that since all the forces are in equilibrium, their sum will add to zero. So therefore, we will summarize what three forces we have. So we have the builder, we then have the weight of the ladder, and we have the pushback force. So therefore, we can then write out an equation. So we know that the weight of the builder is going to be equal to 7w multiplied by 2a cos alpha. And then we have the weight of the ladder, which is going to act horizontally. That is going to be wa cos alpha. And we only have 1a as we know that the length is halved, so then... 2a over 2 is just a and then we have that the pushback force is going to be equal to s which is the force we are trying to find so the reaction of the wall on the ladder at b that is going to be equal to s multiplied by 2a and this time it's the sine alpha because it's acting vertically and we know that all of these add to zero so we can then manipulate these slightly so we can multiply the constants here, so we have 7 multiplied by 2, which is 14w a cos alpha, and we add that to w a cos alpha, and we still subtract 2s a sine alpha, which is equal to 0, and then we can combine these two terms, because these are the same, so that will give us 15w a cos alpha, and then what we can do is we can add 2SA sine alpha to both sides. So we'll have 2A multiplied by S multiplied by sine alpha. We then see we have 
an a here and a here so we can divide both sides by a which is going to leave us with 15 w multiplied by cos alpha and that's going to be equal to 2 s multiplied by sine alpha then what we can now do is if we divide both sides by cos alpha we'll have that 15 w is going to be equal to 2 s multiplied by sine alpha over cos alpha and we know that tan of alpha is equal to 5 over 2 and we also know that tan alpha is equal to sine alpha over cos alpha from our trig identities so therefore we can now say that 15 w is going to be equal to 2 multiplied by s multiplied by this value here 5 over 2 5 over 2 and then that gives us that 15 w is going to be equal to 2 multiplied by 5 over 2 which is 5 so 5 multiplied by s so therefore we can then divide both sides by 5 and that gives us that the force s which is the reaction of the wall on the ladder b we will have that it is going to be equal to 50 over 5 which is 3 w and therefore we've completed the question as this was what was required. This question was worth five marks and we achieved our first mark for taking the moments about A. So that's here where we achieved that. We then achieve our second and third mark for having this expression here. So 7w2a cos alpha plus the rest of that we receive not one but two marks at this point. We then receive a third mark for making use of tan alpha to substitute that in for sine alpha over cos alpha. And then we receive our fifth and final mark for concluding with the required answer, which was 3w. So in part B of this question, we're asked to find the range of possible values of P for which the ladder remains in equilibrium. So we recall that P is a horizontal force which is applied to stop the ladder from slipping. So we know that there'll be two components to this. We'll first have the perpendicular force. So we know that this is everything that's moving perpendicular to the force P. So this is going to be the weight of the builder and the weight of the ladder. So this means that it is going to be 1W plus 7W, which is 8Ws. And let's just denote this as F1. And then we know that the friction is going to be mu multiplied by F1. And we're given in the question that mu is equal to 1 over 4. So we'll have 1 over 4 multiplied by 8, which is equal to 2W. So therefore, we now can work out the max value of P and the minimum value of P, where we will have our friction going for and against the movement. So we will... For the maximum, we will add 2w, and for the minimum, we'll take away 2w. But what do we add and subtract these from? Well, we will use the force, which is the reaction of the wall on the ladder. And we had that from part A, and that was 3w. So we'll just annotate this in here. So we had that 3w comes from part A of the question. So then... Therefore, we know that this is going to be 5w and the minimum will be 1w, which is equal to just w. So therefore, we can state the range. So the range of values of p will be, they're going to be w, p, and 5w. So therefore, the range of possible values are going to be p between 1 W and 5W. In this question there was also 5 marks available and we received our first mark for calculating 8W here. We then received our second mark for calculating the friction force. We then received our third and fourth marks for correctly calculating the maximum and minimum value for P. So that was 5W and 1W. And then we received the fifth and final mark for correctly working out the range and stating it in a range form like this. So in part C of this question, we're told that often in practice, the builder's assistant will simply stand on the bottom of the ladder. And we're asked to explain briefly how this helps to stop the ladder from slipping. So we know that 
by taking the moments of A, the reaction of B will be unchanged, so nothing will be affected from that end. So we'll just write that down by taking moments at A, the reaction on the ladder at B is unchanged. So then secondly, we can say that there will be more weight on the ladder, which means that the perpendicular force will increase. So writing that down, we will have more weight on the ladder, so the perpendicular force will increase. And then in turn, we know that the friction relies on both the friction coefficient and also this perpendicular force. So therefore, since... And then if we denote this perpendicular force as F1, let's say since F1 increases, friction will increase since the friction is equal to this perpendicular force, F1, multiplied by the coefficient mu. In this question, there was three marks available, and we receive one mark for each bullet point we state here. A second mark here, and then we receive our third mark for this third bullet point there.